What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodyB.com and in this video, we're going to update our cart button for our e-commerce app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said in this video, we're going to update our cart button. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodyB.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership to all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last couple of videos, we've been working on session stuff. In this video, we want to work on this button. So we have this button here, it says zero. We can add things to our cart, but this little zero here doesn't update every time we add something to the cart. So that's what we're going to work on in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So the first thing we're going to do is come to our store app and our templates and let's open our nav bar because remember this is where that button is sitting and we've got this thing right here and there's a zero there. So we're going to be updating this little number using our JavaScript jQuery stuff that we kind of set up in the last video. So we need to give this span here an ID so we can reference it later. So I'm going to give this an ID of and we could really call this anything we want but I'm going to call it cart underscore quantity because you know, that's sort of what this is. And for now, it's at zero. So we're definitely going to want to change that in a minute. But for now, let's go ahead and save this. Now we've got all kinds of weird stuff we have to do, we have to update our JavaScript jQuery stuff on our product page. And but we also need to update our cart class to sort of figure out what is the quantity, right? We don't know what the quantity is, we didn't create a quantity field anywhere. So let's head over here to our cart and then our cart.py, this is our cart class. And let's come down here and we've got our add function. This allows us to add things, but we want another function now and I'm gonna call it underscore underscore len underscore underscore. And we wanna pass in self as we always wanna do with these things. And this underscore underscore len, this will allow us to create a little filter that will get the length. What do we wanna do? Well, we want the length and we wanna return it. So let's return len and this is a python function that will count count the length of a thing and we just want self.cart this will come through our cart count up how many things are in it and then just return that whenever we call this little function from cart and remember way back when we set up this context dictionary and this will allow us to pass our cart to any page of our website and this is important because this nav bar is on every page of our website right so anytime we go to any page, this nav bar gets called. And then so we want our cart function thing to be called also. So that context processor we set up a long time ago allows that to happen. We're just passing this and that's kind of all we need to do there. So that looks good. Now let's head over to our views.py file inside of our cart app here. And let's come down here to cart add. And remember, we are returning this product name dot product name. Right, and if we come back here and let's view, uh, inspect our source and look at our console, and let's say we add this to the cart, that's that we're returning product name and then the product name, right? We don't really need to do that. We were just sort of doing that to show how all this worked in the last couple of videos. So let's change this around a little bit and let's come back over here. And instead of returning product name, uh, colon product name, let me just copy this whole thing and comment this out just in case you want to reference it in the future. But let's paste this in again. And let's come up here. And let's get cart quantity. I'm going to create a variable. Again, let's call it cart underscore quantity. And let's just set that equal to cart dot. And here we could just call that underscore underscore len underscore underscore function. Right? So cart dot underscore underscore len is just this thing right here. This is our cart class. We're, call, we're, we're calling cart dot this, right? Which then returns the length of our cart, basically. In our views.py, we can access that cart as cart dot because way up here at the very top of this thing, we created this cart variable and set it equal to our cart class and passed in a request. So that will allow us to do that. Now we just need to send this back to the page, right? And before, like I said, we had product name slash product name. Let's instead change this. I'm just going to put 
QTY, short for quantity. And then let's pass that cart underscore quantity. Okay, that looks good. Go ahead and save that. Now, let's see if we go back here. Let's go to our home page and let's add something else. It's just returning QTY. And then three is not the quantity number, it's the ID number. This is a book three, I guess, right? Or no, that's not right. That's, and that's passing back quantity three. And that three is the number of things in our cart. So if we head back over here and add something else like this guy, and we click this, now it's four, right? Now this thing up here isn't updating yet, but we have the count, it seems correct. And uh, so far so good. So now how do we get this button to update? Couple of things, head back over here. So we're passing this QTY as cart quantity. If we, let's go over to our store slash templates slash product page. And remember, this is where we did all that JavaScript. And every time there's a success, every time we add something into the cart, we are sending this console.log message out, this JSON message. And that is in fact what this thing is right here, that JSON message thing. Now we don't really need that. So we can comment this out. Now instead, what we want to do is update that ID in our nav bar. Remember that we just created at the beginning of this video that has an ID of cart underscore quantity. So let me copy this. And so we can do that a couple of different ways. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's go, yeah, let's just go document dot. And here we want to get element by ID. And this is just JavaScript. Again, I've got a JavaScript course over at codemy.com. If you're interested in learning more JavaScript, check that out. It's relatively cheap. And here, what element do we want to get? We want to get that cart quantity element, or you could use, I guess, double quotes, whatever you want to do, cart underscore quantity. And then we want to set the text content, or I guess you could do inner HTML, whatever you want. This should work. And we want to set that to the JSON dot QTY. So this, remember, we were printing out to the console the JSON, and that JSON was, come back over here, was basically this like dictionary looking thing. It looks like a Python dictionary, and has a key value pair. The key is QTY, the value is four. So we can call that by calling JSON.QTY. And there we go. So that looks good. Go ahead and save that. Now, we need to head back over to our nav bar and update this guy a little bit. So we've already set the ID as cart quantity, but we've got this sitting here at zero. Instead of that, we want to output the cart length. And we can call this length filter because we name this underscore underscore len underscore underscore. It's all length stuff. Django just knows what all this is. And that should do the trick. So let's go ahead and save this, head back over here and hit reload. And boom, our little button says four. So if we come back over here and get rid of that, and let's say this one, and we add this to cart, boom, it automatically updates to five. The page itself doesn't have to refresh. This is all jQuery and JavaScript doing everything behind the scenes. And that's all there is to it. Now let's head over here and let's just make sure this is working. Let's inspect this, let's go to storage. And let's, let's see, delete our session ID, and then hit reload. So our cart goes back to zero, we have a brand new session. So let's start back over, it still says zero up here. And let's say I want to add Python programming, we add this to cart, boom, one, that looks good. We come back to any page, it still says one up there every time. Looking good. And if we go to tkinter programming, and click add to cart, boom, that goes to two. Again, we can go to any other page, it's still two, and that's all there is to it. So not really that complicated, very cool, and that's kind of all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you could use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.